Hi everyone, Matt Watson here from CarWow. So I'm here with the Dodge Ram. Actually, it's not called the Dodge Ram anymore. It's just called Ram. It's a brand in its own right. And this is one of America's favorite pickup trucks. And so in this video, I'm gonna review it. And to do that, I'm gonna show you around the exterior design. You have two proper exhaust pipes, give you a tour of the interior. I'm impressed and you know I like a good cubby space. Show you how practical it is. That's super strong. And of course, take it for a drive. And then you get that V8 raw. But before we do all that, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on so you're alerted when we make a new upload. That way you won't miss any of our videos. All right, then, let's kick off this review by talking about this truck's design and you can be in no doubt of what brand it is. Huge Ram logo on the front. It's also got a redesigned grill. I like the swoopy effect and it looks really cool with this chrome. This truck has loads of road presence. Moving down the sides, you've got the 1500 logo there and Hemi 5.7 litre signifying this one has a V8 underneath the hood. You've got Ram logo here and this particular version has chrome door mirrors. The side's pretty plain really, though apparently Ram have done a lot of work in the design of where the body meets the trailer part because that helps smooth airflow down the sides. As you can see, this one is the four door, the crew cab, but you can get a quad cab with slightly shorter rear doors if you want that. Now this new Ram is actually four inches longer than the old one, but because they've used high strength steel in certain parts of it, it's about 100 kilos lighter, which is good news. This one is the Laramie version, which is a higher spec trim. In fact, this particular truck, basic, is $45,000. Though with all the options on it, it's 60 grand. Having said that though, the entry level Ram kicks off at $31,000. Moving back here, you can see the new Ram logo, which has this 3D effect on it. It's a little bit trippy. And I like this, you have two proper exhaust pipes to let that V8 breathe. This Ram has the nicest interior of any pickup. Now, entry-level versions are Spartan, but this mid-spec Laramie has pretty much all you need. It looks lovely, actually. You get things like leather seats and leatherette stitching on the dash, which feels expensive. Lots of squidgy materials about the place. If you look hard enough, you'll find some cheaper plastics around, but a lot less than in many pickups. And there are the odd bits which are questionable, like these weird inserts on the door. But other than that, I really, really like the look of it. This particular model is fitted with an optional, huge portrait style infotainment system, and it's brilliant. It's almost like what you get in a Tesla. It's very easy to use and navigate around. It does a split screen thing, just like a Tesla. And I like the way they've also included physical fan controls and temperature controls on the side of it so you can operate it easily while you're driving rather than having to mess around in the menus. This infotainment system obviously comes with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. The standard fit 8 inch screen that you get on this Laramie model also gets Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But the entry level versions of the Ram come with a really small screen which is nowhere near as nice. I also like the fact you've got a little digital display between the analog dials. Once again, it's crisp, nice and clean display, and you can move through various functions using the buttons on the steering wheel. It's very well thought out, actually, this thing. Everything's laid out very, very simply. So you've got your controls for your parking sensors, your ESP down here, and your trailer control. There's some USB connectors down here and an auxiliary in. There's a three-pin socket in there. There's a little cubby on the top of the dash and a 12-volt charging socket. Down here, you have your lights. A bit lower down, you have your electronic handbrake and a button that controls the actual pedals. Yes, you can move the pedal box like in some kind of racing car. That is super cool. And that makes it really easy to get comfy because you've got lots of adjustment in the steering wheel and in the seats as well. It really is a nice thought out truck. If you look up here, you've got big visor and it extends out to shade you if the sun is coming from there. There's also loads and loads of clever storage solutions. So we've got a little place here in the door, then proper door pockets lower down with cutouts to hold a bottle. Then there's some cup holders here, look at that. And they can take big cups and smaller bottles like this because they've got little grippers in so things don't slide around. Also watch this, under here, there's lots of room and you can slide this tray forwards and backwards. So you can really configure it just as you want it and fill it right up. And there's a little holder there for your mobile phone. There's some more spaces here and here where you can store some more stuff. You've got a reasonable size glove box, but it doesn't matter that it's not the biggest because you've got another storage area up here as well. Up here, there's your glasses case. I mean, there's just so many places to leave things and probably lose things as well. I'm impressed and you know I like a good cubby space. Also, I like this. The panoramic glass roof, which you can get on this ram it opens halfway and then if you want it to go all the way you press it again yay 
One other feature I should point out are the grab handles, which you need to get in and out in a tall truck such as this. On many trucks, they poke out and get in the way of your eye line, but these have been specifically designed so they don't actually extend beyond the A-pillar. Great idea, this thing is so well thought out. I hope it's the same in the back. The back seats of the Ram are absolutely epic. Decent headroom, despite having this panoramic glass roof fitted. Lots of knee room, plenty of foot space as well, and you can stretch out into the seat in front. I like this feature, look at this. I can slide the seat and then they recline and it's even more comfy then. I also like the fact that they've got three individual chairs. So the middle seat is just as comfortable as the outer two. And because it's nice and wide, this cab, there's plenty of shoulder space and plenty of foot space because you've got a completely flat floor. It's really, really well thought out. If there's no one sat here, you can pull this down and use the armrest. You've got a couple of cup holders there and a bit of storage there. In fact, there's loads of storage. There's more cup holders here. You've got pockets in the seat backs, storage here, huge door bins down here. And under here, look, there's even more storage under there, would you believe? And even some tie down points. This is brilliant. And of course you can lift up the seat bases to carry things in here and store things under there. There are of course Isofix anchor points, which are easy to get at here and here. Kids will love it back here as well because low window, ledge, great view out. Windows go all the way down as well. And there's plenty of places to charge everyone's devices. Look, loads of USB points there. Three pin charging socket there. And we've even got heated rear seats on this particular version. This is a great pickup for families, no doubt about it. Now let's talk about load carrying capability. So in the 6.4 length bed, you have a capacity of 1700 litres. If you have the 5.7 length bed, you have a capacity of 1500 litres. Still pretty good. Also, the Ram has a towing capability of an incredible six tonnes, up to six tonnes. I mean, that's super strong. Very, very impressive. If there's only one thing that annoys me, it's that when you've got this tailgate down, there's no little steps that you have on a Chevrolet Silverado to just jump into the back. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can see my full in-depth video review of that truck. And that brings me on to five annoying things things about the Ram and rather than me run through them I'm going to hand you over to Carlos Lego from Edmunds.com who's been running this very truck. Having an upper level glove box is really neat except for this gap right here. At night you can actually see the light inside the storage shining through. It's pretty annoying. The Ram's available with all the latest safety tech but to get things like parking assistance and frontal collision mitigation you have to go to a higher trim level like this Laramie. Ram does a lot of Easter eggs like this conversion sheet underneath here. I don't know when the last time you needed to use the Pythagorean theorem is, but there it is. You also have this Ram logo, which feels a bit unnecessary because I already have one right here. And plus resting your elbow on it could get annoying. Now, because the door stops right about here, if I've just driven through a big pile of mud and I have because I'm driving a truck, when I step out, oh, suddenly I've just got mud on the back of my jeans. The Ram can do off-road with the Rebel trim level, but when it comes to real serious stuff, Ford still has the bragging rights with the F-150 Raptor. It's not all negative though. Here's the Callway 5 core features. The Ram is available with the most powerful sound system ever fitted to a pickup. It's a Harman Kardon system. It has 19 speakers, 900 watts, and a 10-inch subwoofer with noise cancellation. The Roto gear selector is super easy to use, and I like the fact that when you turn the engine off, it automatically goes into park. There seems to be something missing, look. Where are the big leaf springs that you normally get on pickup trucks? They're not there because they're replaced by coil springs for a more sophisticated ride. Also, you can even get this vehicle with all-round air suspension. The reversing camera has a special zoom function to look down at the tow hitch to make it easier to attach a trailer. Also, if you've got a trailer attached, the blind spot monitoring can tell and will account for the fact so you don't suddenly weave it into other cars while changing lanes. As you go over 35 miles an hour, this active front air dam extends down to improve the aerodynamics. Engine choices are pretty simple. There's a 3 litre V6 diesel, a 3.6 litre V6 petrol, or this 5.7 litre V8 Hemi, which has 395 horsepower and 555 newton metres of torque. All engines come with an eight-speed automatic gearbox, and you can get rear-wheel drive or four-wheel drive versions. Now, for full details, on the Ram or other pickups or any cars in the US, head over to edmunds.com. It's basically the American version of CarWow, so a car comparison website. The link is in the description below. Right then, what is the Ram 1500 like to drive? Well, I'll tell you what, I have all the pickup trucks I've driven, this is by far the nicest. It has the comfiest ride. It's actually really good over bumps. You still get a little bit of shimmy and shake, 
because after all it's built on a ladder frame chassis but because you've got that coil spring suspension at the back it's just way more composed than other trucks that have leaf spring i'll tell you another thing that's good the steering it's nice and light it's fairly precise as well all in all it's quite pleasant to drive and when you're just cruising along it's reasonably quiet the v8 doesn't make much of a noise until you want it to and when you want it to you put your foot down and then you get that v8 raw the gearbox eight speeds responds really really well i don't know if you could hear it there the tires squealing a bit you know you can push this thing into the corners it goes round really well for a truck and the brakes have a nice solid feel to them yeah have plenty of stopping power as well this is surprisingly good to drive being british and coming into these big trucks i just thought they'd be absolutely awful but this has just changed my mind do you know what the luxury car of america isn't a lincoln or a cadillac anymore it's a dodge ram high spec dodge ram lovely inside comfy to drive super practical does it all if i was going to make one complaint i guess i could say that the v8 in this truck doesn't quite have the punch that you get from the turbocharged v6 and a ford f-150 but really i'm splitting airs i'll take this i'd quite like one thank you very much trouble is when you bring them to the uk with import taxes they work out super expensive so i don't think i'll bother but if i was in the states i would choose one of these So then, what's my final verdict on the Ram 1500? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should just go right ahead and buy the Ram. It is a brilliant all-round pickup truck and can be all things to all people. If you want that, need less practical calibre, I'll do. Yeah.